Hello, my name is Kendra Koontz, and today I'm going to be sharing with you a case of a sheared stent and successful snare. The patient uh, that I'm going to be talking about today is an 80-year-old male who presented with uh, Canadian class reangina on relatively good medical therapy. He does have a history of coronary artery disease. He underwent uh, intervention to the left circumflex and distal RCA in 2010. He was noted to have a residual 50% uh, proximal RCA stenosis that at the time was FFR negative and so was medically managed. He also has a history of peripheral vascular disease, hypertension, and hyperlipidemia. And when he presented with these symptoms to his primary, he was referred for a treadmill test uh, which resulted in a high-risk uh, Duke treadmill score. And so ultimately he was referred for coronary angiography at an outside facility. This is the initial angiogram picture. I'm just going to focus on the right coronary artery. The left coronary artery did show um, some moderate disease in the LAD, but otherwise no significant stenoses. But what you can appreciate of the right coronary, um, although it is somewhat challenging to see, but there is a uh, significant uh, osteostenosis um, that's very eccentric and heavily calcified as well. In the mid-RCA, there's also a significant stenosis that uh, also appears to be heavily calcified. And so given his um, symptoms on relatively good medical therapy and positive stress tests, the uh, plan was to move ahead with intervention to the right coronary. So this proved to be quite difficult. Um, ultimately, a BMW wire was able to cross the proximal lesion, uh, but the operator was not able to advance it more distally. Um, he was unable to advance a 30 by 15 balloon over this wire, and so the plan was at this point to proceed uh, with a rotational atherectomy of the uh, proximal lesion, which was performed uh, with a uh, 125 burr. Again, they were not able to advance the uh, rotowire past the mid lesion, and so this was just performed proximally. Following, following this, a 25 by 12 uh, balloon uh, was successful, um, uh, was successfully advanced into the proximal lesion and, and expanded, and a 25 by 15 millimeter uh, drug eluting stent was advanced and successfully deployed into the uh, proximal lesion. Um, unfortunately, uh, following this, the operator was unable to pass a 20 two by 15 non-compliant balloon um, into the stent, and so it was not post-dilated. At this point, um, the patient was, was totally stable, not having any symptoms, there were no changes um, on the ECG, and so the plan was um, to stop here and continue with optimal medical therapy and, and see how the patient did. And, uh, this demonstrates the final shot the operator took. Um, you can see there's this stent in the proximal portion, but there's still some residual kind of tubular stenosis there, and then the mid lesion uh, appears about the same as before. And so um, ultimately in the intervening uh, few months, the patient continued to really have significant angina and good therapy, and so he was referred to our facility for consideration of intervention uh, to the RCA. And so we started with an AL.75 guide and we were able to advance past both the proximal and mid lesion with the Scion Blue wire. Um, and multiple uh, predilations of both the mid and proximal lesion uh, were performed. And what this demonstrates, uh, this image was the RCA uh, after multiple uh, balloon dilations were performed. So it was felt that the vessel was, was well expanded and we were ready to proceed with um, placement. So a guideliner was advanced through the proximal lesion using a balloon anchoring technique. And at this point, an attempt was made to advance a 30 by 22 millimeter um, drug eluting stent. However, um, the stent was, was unable to be advanced. And so at this point, the plan was to remove the stent and perform uh, further vessel preparation with an eye towards uh, laser atherectomy. However, uh, once the uh, balloon was removed from the body, it was, it was clear um, that there was no longer a stent present on the outside of the balloon. And so what this fluoro image demonstrates, if you look right between the two red arrows here, uh, is the sheared stent. And it's really attached to the proximal portion of the uh, prior stent in the osteal RCA, um, and, then, and then hanging out really into the uh, aorta. 
And so at this point, um, multiple uh, stent retrieval techniques were employed in getting uh, this stent out of the out of the body. And so the first uh, uh, attempt was to uh, place an additional wire um, through the stent, and uh, they were unable to do this. They next tried to or next attempted to sheath the stent with a seven French guidezilla, and this was also unsuccessful. And so the uh, next step was to uh, employ a microsnare technique. And so a microsnare um, was placed over the guide wire that was still parked um, in the distal RCA and advanced through the um, guide and, and was able to successfully engage and capture uh, the stent. The guidezilla was then advanced over both the snare and the stent and at the same time that uh, forward pressure was being applied on the guidezilla. There was traction applied to the snare and stent, and the entire uh, snare and stent released and were removed from the body. Uh, we were able to maintain distal wire position with this, and following injections uh, revealed that there was no evidence of coron disru coronary disruption, i.e. Um, uh, perforation or dissection uh, following stent removal. And over here you can see with the stent uh, looked like following removal from the body. So following this, uh, additional uh, vessel preparation was performed, so there was further predilation um, that was performed over the original wire. Um, we did perform multiple runs of laser atherectomy, both proximal um, and uh, to the mid-RCA, and some final predilations were performed. Ultimately, a 35 by 38 uh, millimeter drug eluting stent was deployed in the mid RCA and a 35 by 12 um, to the osteal RCA overlapping the prior stent. And then a final post dilation was performed. And this uh, uh, over here demonstrates the, the final image uh, that was obtained, demonstrating good um, stent expansion and normal uh, distal coronary flow. So in conclusion, um, coronary stent dislodgement is a uh, relatively rare complication. However, uh, it can still occur and unfortunately can lead to catastrophic consequences, i.e. Uh, distal embolization into the coronary with acute uh, vessel collapse or possible dissection or potentially embolization to other parts of the body and, and you know, such potential catastrophic consequences of stroke or death. Um, there are several factors that operators should be aware of that can increase the risk of stent dislodgement. Things such as extreme angulation and vessel tortuosity and calcification. Um, proceeding with a direct stenting technique um, with inadequate vessel preparation or the presence of a previously deployed stent. So close attention should really be um, paid to, to vessel preparation, particularly in those scenarios. Um, however, even with the best of preparations and intentions, dislodgement can still occur. And so operators need to be familiar with the uh, multiple management strategies for stent removal. Um, I think this case demonstrates that as there were multiple different um, techniques employed, starting with sort of the simplest and moving up uh, to, to the more um, complex techniques. Um, so, you know, potential uh, techniques that have been described in the literature, there's multiples. Um, the probably uh, easiest, uh, if, if you're able to get it done, is, is the simple placing a, a wire or advancing a balloon into the stent, um, inflating it inside the stent and, ex and either expanding it in place or removing it out the guide catheter. Um, you can also attempt to pass an additional wire into the stent and sort of tangle it with the uh, uh, distal guide wire that's, that's present and um, subsequently pull them both out. Um, there's also the option of potentially crushing the stent in place. This isn't as um, an ideal of an option, um, particularly if you're in an osteal um, uh, location, but maybe your only option. And then of course the one described in this case, the snare entrapment. Um, which was ultimately successful in this case and has the benefit um, of maintaining distal uh, uh, wire position in case there were a complication. Thank you.